Howdy folks, I am uh, just doing a quick little update here about my little bacon run uh, game, because who the hell doesn't like bacon, am I right? So I am presently uh, starting from scratch for the levels um, based on feedback and I'm playing it. They were a little funky. There was some uh, importing issues I ran into where the actual the mesh was uh, smoothed out and wasn't hard, I guess is, is the term a lot of these things use. Uh, you weren't able to see the edges. Uh, it was all kind of rounded, all kind of blended together, which was gross. Um, also, Blender does not import uh, materials correctly into Unity. Uh, so I kind of played around, um, looked online a little bit for some solutions, and uh, tested that. Uh, one of my pre-existing maps uh, also found uh, that uh, you can get lost really easily, which, you know, granted is uh, kind of the point of a maze game. <clears throat> but uh, at some point it became mind-numbing. Um, my wife just kind of walked out, and uh, somebody else said, yeah, after like 15 minutes, you just want to smash your head against the desk. So I've implemented a couple mechanics uh, that I will be demonstrating in a future web build and maybe a video clip later. Uh, give you some uh, gameplay ideas. Basically the uh, character yourself now walks around and kind of uh, poops out little little red particles uh, across the map. That way you do take a wrong turn you can go and get uh, reoriented and backtrack yourself. Uh, also uh, added a particle emitter on the bacon cube at the end of the maze as well to kind of just blast into the sky, little yellow particles, um, which kind of helps you as you're moving through it get a sense of where you're going. Um, figured it was probably easier to do that, a little more fun than just doing a compass uh, or an arrow pointing at the, the bacon the whole time or a power up. Uh, I found out when I was testing earlier that uh, as soon as I was facing this whole mind-numbing, oh my god, even with these particles, I'm still lost, I would catch a glimpse of those little yellow things flying up from the bacon cube uh, over the walls and make a turn and, and just was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, and would start running towards it. So that, uh, I think, is a cool gameplay feature I'm going to actually keep in there like that. Um, level design for the actual mazes um, as you can see I'm doing it right now and it's kind of mind-numbingly tedious but I have a little more control over this and you know the problem with procedurally generating something auto generating a maze is that uh, there's not really a lot of control uh, without writing an overly complicated algorithm to do it which is not my specialty um, so we decided to use a random maze generator for a you know two-dimensional maze uh, I mean really these are just meant for for fun to spit out print out and then do yourself uh, programs called a maze and it is on uh, free on SourceForge so I just kind of downloaded that randomly generated some uh, some maze templates uh, imported the picture into blender and boom, just kind of use a plane, subdivide it a crap load of times, and then click on each individual face one at a time until I get them all. Um, again, this lets me know that there is one path to win and nothing's really funky. There's no surprises. There's no not being able to win. Uh, you know, a lot of those funky things can happen when you randomly generate it. Computers are only so smart. So this is kind of what I've been doing um, off and on. Uh, I discovered that the first five maps I had created for the actual levels are really complicated. Overly so. Um, when you're actually in there trying to run around, uh, average time was somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes to complete, which uh, is crazy, especially if you're just starting out. Uh, the first few levels so decided to go back uh, since I was gonna have to rework the original meshes anyway uh, in Blender I figured I'd just go back uh, generate some new ones 
So at this point I've got templates for 25. Uh, I'm going to have 5 level 1 maps, 5 level 2, level 3, level 4. My original overly complicated maps are going to be reserved for level 5. Uh, so you, you know, beat the 5 maps at a certain level, you get a nice little, yay you, now on to the next level, yada yada yada. Um, so that is in the works and uh, looking pretty good right now. I think it's probably the way to go. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, the overall flow of it, that way people aren't getting overly frustrated really early on. Um, you know, like I did, uh, just trying to test out a couple things. It was a massive pain in the ass without my little trusty cheat sheet here. Um, you know, when I went to do a couple of them just to make sure things were kosher, uh, you know, and as being, you know, the, the programmer, <clears throat> I had to make sure that, you know, the mesh was solid and I wasn't going to run into any issues, so I used a cheat sheet for, uh, you know, the first couple just to get a sense of, you know, make sure it was good, make sure the flow, and try to get myself lost. Uh, I made sure I did uh, three or, f I think three of them um, without the cheat sheet, and that's what I was like, holy crap. So, um, looking good so far. So, just kind of walking you through the concept here as I'm just mind numbingly clicking this one little button over and over and over and over again. Um, so, I'm working on this video just to give some uh, little documentation as far as what I'm going to be doing and how I'm doing that for anyone who uh, cares. Uh, I know a lot of people are very interested in this kind of stuff. Other people are like, oh, it's neat that you do that, but I don't really get or care how you do it. Uh, doesn't really interest people. Uh, personally, I really enjoy seeing the creative process, so I figured I would uh, just kind of show everybody kind of how I do this and what I do. Uh, there's an A's, just like that. Uh, and this took uh, roughly uh, about 15 minutes to uh, to get that done, which is cool, uh, which is very cool. So I'm also going to be uh, doing a video later. I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, include it in this one and piggyback it or if I'm uh, going to do a separate one. Uh, I think I've got like 15 minutes YouTube cut off or something at this point. Um, so, yeah, I mean, at this point, uh, after the mesh is done, just, uh, boom, boom, unwrap, smart project, boom, because quite honestly, I'm not, uh, doing any texturing in here, but I found that if you don't UV map it and just assign the random crappy texture in here, your problem is actually putting a texture on it in, uh, in Unity, which is a, a massive pain in the ass. Um, the other thing I found, which I think does actually jack up the poly count, but uh, adding an edge split modifier will help you uh, keep it sharp. Um, instead of having that rounded thing, I'm sure there's other ways to do it, but a click of a button. And 25 maps to go, I will uh, take the click of the button uh, and suffer at this point. Um, I mean, it's not really going on on Android or YouTube at this. I'm um, sorry, Android or iOS at this point. So, not overly concerned about that. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's uh, there's our map, map. There's our mesh. Um, the other uh, geeky detail that uh, you know some of you guys will appreciate is the scaling is crazy. Um, does not really correlate between. Unity and Blender. So I've got to scale these things uh, quite a bit. Um, the original ones I had to do, I think 30 times, but they were a little more complicated. So I'm doing these up 25 times to import and see if that does it. So uh, that's it. Um, we might pick up in a couple minutes with the Unity and go from there. Thanks.